Among all that we do in interventional cardiology, PCI for ST elevation myocardial infarction is the lifesaver beyond any doubt. And because it must be finished within minutes, small enhancements can mean a lot for a patient's life. I'm presenting this quick STEMI case to show some of the tricky situations and how to go through them successfully. This is a 38-year-old gentleman who's diabetic for two years. He presents with acute chest pain of four hours duration. His ECG shows anterior ST elevation, suggesting occlusion of the left anterior descending. Taken quickly to the cath lab, we punctured the radial artery in the snuff box, cannulated the left coronary with EBU3 guiding catheter, and here are the angiograms. The LAD is missing, of course. We can see only its very distant part, but we can't see where the stump is. Where shall we go with the wire? One maneuver that I find helpful sometimes is filming at 30 frames per second in one or two projections. Here we found the suspected stump in the left anterior projection and the bifurcation with the diagonal branch. How to go through this ambiguous stump? My everyday workhorse wire is the BMW, but here I chose Sion wire because of the better torque and one-to-one -one movement transmission. We managed to engage the stump with a Sion wire and we crossed the occlusion into the distal left anterior descending. We pre-dilated just with a 2mm balloon and this revealed an extensively diseased LED typical of young Asian diabetic mains. And of course, stenting diffuse disease is never a good idea. Whenever I see a small caliber vessel with diffuse disease, I think of drug-coated balloons, DCB. But do we have evidence on DCB in ST elevation MI? In a meta-analysis of four randomized trials, including 485 patients with acute MI who underwent PCI, DCB was associated with no difference in MACE compared with the control on routine clinical follow-up. And this effect was consistent when comparing DCB with drug eluting stents. DCB was associated with a lower risk of MACE when compared with bare metal stents. DCB was also associated with no difference in the incidence of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and target lesion revascularization. Importantly, the incidence of myocardial infarction was lower with drug-coated balloons, but this effect was not consistent when comparing DCB with drug routing stents or bare metal stents, respectively. Drug-coated balloons were associated with lower minimum lumen diameter post-index procedure, but with a similar minimum lumen diameter on follow-up angiography. Thus, they had a lower late lumen loss compared to controls. However, these findings were based on a small number of triands with a small number of events, future large volume well-designed randomized control triands with extensive follow-up are needed to evaluate the exact role of DCB in this setting. But there is a concern that the thrombus will impair the delivery of the drug to the vessel wall. How to fix that problem? Eliminating the thrombus and proper lesion preparation are foundational to the success of DCB. In our patient, TIMI3 flow was established just with a 2mm balloon, and there was no significant residual thrombus burden. We dilated with a 2 5 by 20 OPN high-pressure balloon. We saw some improvement, but it was not sufficient to use only the drug-coated balloon. We went for a bigger 2.75 cutting balloon and we achieved a decent result. We dilated the distal LED with a long 2.5 mm NC balloon and we were happy with the result. We finally dilated proximally with a 275 by 30 DCB and distally with a 2.5 by 40 mm DCB with a very nice final result. Note the myocardial bridge in the LED which was another good reason why we should have avoided stenting in this patient. Echo on the next day showed a normal ejection fraction with no wall motion abnormalities suggesting successful myocardial salvage. The patient was discharged home uneventfully and he's following up with no complaints. So what are the lessons learned here? Filming at 30 frames per second means more radiation of course, but 
that may be needed in some STEMI situations, like an ambiguous thumb or an infarction with no visible occlusive disease. Drug-coated balloons work in ST Elevation MI. Lesion preparation is the key to success of angioplasty, especially with drug-coated balloons. Before you reach to the decision point of drug-coated balloons versus drug eluting stents, make sure that you have done your best in dilating and preparing the lesion with cutting balloon, scoring balloon, high-pressure balloons, or even a thorectomy. Only then you can make the decision to proceed with drug eluting balloon or drug eluting stent. Thank you for watching this episode of Cardio Buzz. We are excited to share all of this medical, scientific, and practical knowledge with you. So, stay tuned for all the updates and subscribe to the show. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Feel free to share the episode in your social media accounts to spread the knowledge and science. Wishing you all a healthy and safe year.